Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. What do you know? I'm on vacation. Finally finished the finals and all this other stuff. So now I get to have fun and relax during the summer. And I thought it would be nice to review a small summer camp comedy, Meatballs. Yes, the godfather of all summer camp movies, right there, <laughs> with Bill Murray as Tripper Harrison, the head counselor of Camp North Star. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm glad to see that when I got this at Walmart, and I just show you the video that I posted. I mean, I'm glad to see that they were going for this VHS style um, where they got the original poster art from when the movie came out, trying to make it look like an actual raunchy sex comedy, but in reality, it's actually a sweet, small, Canadian uh, summer camp movie that's just fun to watch. And it's also hilarious mostly because of Bill Murray's character. Because he's so zany, funny, and <laughs> joining in with the counselors and, and even the kids, as well as young teenagers joining in. It's a whole lot of fun. Yeah. And this movie became the biggest hit uh, of the summer back in 1979. Um, mostly because um, <clears throat> it was on a small budget. And because this was the starting point of Bill Murray's career after being on the TV series, uh, well, or this rate, follow up to, because um, he was doing the National Lampoons and stuff, I think. But he was from the TV series Saturday Night Live. He was a cast member. And he also joined in by Harold Ramis, who co wrote this movie along with uh, many of the other writers and also Ira Reitman and this is his first directorial debut and what do you know <laughs> because those two guys will wind up doing or I should say free or several others will went on to do Stripes and Ghostbusters along with the sequel <laughs> so what an awesome track record right there yeah yeah, and this Blu-ray release uh, came out from Lionsgate back in 2012. Um, if you take out the slip cover, yeah, they also include a digital copy because they never did have a digital copy when it was originally released. Um, but I already used the code, so <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm just going to cover that. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like. Basically, the same uh, cover art as as before right here and well sad to say this release is bare bones it only contains the commentary from the previous DVD release that was actually the special edition release from Sony that had the 47 minute documentary that split into free sadly yeah because this could have been a nice fit for this Blu-ray alone. So, but the the commentary was very informative. So you get to hear director Ivan Reitman along with co-writer and producer Dan Goldberg. Yeah, he joins in too. He's one of the writers, and they discuss about how they did this movie and how it came to be, and because they were working on Animal House at the time, so they had to work. Um, this hard to actually have this movie on screen they weren't even so sure if Bill Murray was going to show up because even he didn't want to do the film and that was a shame but in the end you know I think they talked him out of it and and I guess right right from the start or I think like the third day of shooting or so well they finally got him and this is where they had to do some improvs and other dialogues that he was given you know considering that they gave him a script so try to see how this follows. Um, but yeah, Bill Murray, 
I mean, it's hard to say, too, because I know Bill Murray, you know, he's an awesome comedian, no doubt about it. He's hilarious. He's always fun to watch. But it's sad that even in real life, you know, he's not exactly what you expected from him. And, yeah, that's, that's not something you want to talk about. And I'm not going to let that happen. But the transfer is very solid. Um, yeah, people say it's decent, but actually it's very good. In fact, it looks a lot better than all the previous uh, releases. I mean, mostly because this movie was from Paramount Pictures. And they bought the rights uh, through international releases. Uh, mostly because this is a Canadian film. and Yeah, because it was produced by um, companies like Famous Players and Halberton Films. So that explains it. So that's why they gave it to companies like... Uh, HBO, and then later Sony, and finally Lionsgate. Now this is a movie I watched as a kid. I, I used to watch this when it was on HBO, and then it was on like TV stations. Like I think it was Fox 11 that played this, so I know I watched it uh, in the afternoon and when I was in high school. Yeah, because my teacher actually played this movie on VHS. <laughs> I had fun with this film. I really did. Uh, I love the humor. I I love the characters. I mean, it plays exactly what a summer camp movie is about. You know, they get to go to all these obstacles and they get to compete with the other summer camp um, out there and, and they're trying to do their best to win or they get to do a lot of uh, crazy shit going around. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Heavyweights, I mean, which is my favorite movie of all time when it comes to summer camp movies. I mean, and now that I think about it, Heavyweights is definitely the Citizen Kane of summer camp films, whereas this is The Godfather. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I had to use the term because think about it. I mean, out of all movies out there, I mean, no one will ever forget the Meatballs nor... Uh, heavyweights but there's been several other summer camp movies even before and after that follows I mean some of them are pretty obscured you know others are like basically either horror films you know like Friday the 13th for example or Sleepaway Camp and then we get like some other um, TV shows like Salute to Shorts which is a kids and teen TV show that's on Nickelodeon um, then you get like most of which are raunchy comedies and stuff. So that's that's more than what you bargain for. <laughs> but but sadly, um, I kind of miss those days. You know, I, I I just miss you know having fun. You know, watching these movies and it does make you feel like you want to go to summer camp, doesn't it? I mean, that's what I love about them because they just feel like. You want to be right there, you want to have fun, you want to do all these fun activities like going on go-karts, uh, riding on canoes, um, you know, play like all these other sports, and yes, get to meet beautiful, sexy girls. <laughs> yeah, that will cause you to have a boner. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there are sex-related jokes in this film, too, that really worked. And, um, and there's other stuff that's in there. I mean... Apparently, yeah, Meatballs was supposed to be like an animal house for summer camping, but it still had some adult humor, sexual related kinds, considering that it's pretty tame, it's a PG rated film, that apparently it became a franchise that follows, you know, we had Meatballs Part 2, which had Richard Mulligan, along with Paul Rubens, you know, Pee Wee Herman himself, uh, John Larroquette from Night Court, he's in it. And I think that was the one where it had the alien, and it had a mix of of uh, two movies that were popular. But it, it was a strange sequel. But you know what? It was okay. It's a. I think it was as a guilty pleasure. You know, it's fun. Uh, the third movie, which had Patrick Dempsey actually playing the role that Chris Makepeace played, which is um, the character uh, Rudy. Yeah, he was a very shy kid. Um, yeah, which is a, a very strange one, but but it did have a hot chick, um, Shannon Tweet, in it, 
How's that Sally Killerman? Which is like, I guess they were going for a different subplot, which involves like, I don't know, angels and stuff. Kind of weird. Um, eh, it was alright. But then there's the fourth movie with Corey Feldman, and that one really sucked. I'm sorry, but that one was just abysmal to watch. I mean, yes, you get the sex and stuff, you know, nudity. I mean, even the third movie had nudity, too. So, yes, that was the first movie to give it an R rating. Um, the fourth one was also R rated. Granted, I love Patrick Dempsey and Corey Feldman as opposed to those other actors, but nothing could um, touch this film. And I mean nothing, because, you know, Bill Murray's the man, you know. He's an awesome comedian, a great actor, and... I just never get tired of it. So, let's uh, do the review. Stars once again: Bill Murray, uh, Chris Makepeace, uh, Kate Lynch, uh, Harvey Atkin, who's no longer with us, um, but he's he's a great actor. Uh, Russ uh, Banham, Sarah Togolf, uh, Jack Blum, Keith Knight, Matt Craven. Yes, Matt Craven, who later went on to do uh, Jacob's Ladder. Uh, as well as several others he's been in. Todd Hoffman, uh, Jim McLarty, and Christine DeBell. It's uh, written by Lynn Blum, uh, Dan Goldberg, Janice Allen, and Harold Ramis. Yeah. It will always be remembered. You know, a, a great writer, a fascinating writer, um, actor, and director, and it's directed by Ira Reitman. The movie begins when we meet a head counselor of a group of new counselor in training, or CITs for short, at a summer camp called Camp North Star, somewhere in Canada, doesn't explain, but you get the idea, named Tripper Harrison, played by Bill Murray, He's met with um, the camp director, Morty Melnick, nicknamed Mickey. And he also falls in love with his love interest, uh, who's the camp counselor and assistant, uh, Roxanne, who's played by Kate Lynch. So, <laughs> basically, as usual, they, they decided to remodel the entire camp. You know, he's just uh, inside his bunk, you know, just uh, doing all these camp announcements while wearing a helmet and, you know, they're already getting ready for it, you know, with the entire uh, kids, the teenagers, uh, just joining around, you know, remodeling the entire camp. You know, they had to set up all the uh, the mirrors of of all these uh, camp bunkers around and, but apparently the glass breaks. <laughs> Or they had to paint the the dock all yellow. Well, you know, one is well, one guy is just uh, <laughs> is reading a comic book of Superman, and, and he falls asleep, and he fell straight into the river, and uh, <laughs> and they're trying to um, you know try to fix the the roof, and then <laughs> but the guy just you know just fell off. Now, just when they knocked the, the ladder, <laughs> that sort of thing. So, yeah, they're getting ready. Um, they had all the bus set up, you know, with uh, Camp um, Mohawk joining in. Yeah, you saw, like, a, a local Kmart, you know, just when we meet uh, all the, uh, the teenagers. So you got uh, Spaz, played by Jack Blum. You got um, Crockett. His real name is Bobby, played by Russ uh, Banham. You got uh, Fink, you know, the fat guy, uh, whose real name is Larry, you know, played by Keith Knight. You got Hardware, his last name is Vanzetti, played by Matt Craven. Um, also, we got uh, Wheels, played by Todd Hoffman. And we also got the girls, which includes... Uh, Candace, played by Sarah Tuggoff, Jackie, and even um, A.L., which is a tomboyish uh, character, 
played by Christine D. Bell. Yeah, there's other girls joining in too. But we also got uh, a lot of little kids, you know, boys joining, of maybe girls too. That sort of thing. So, so they're getting ready for for the summer. <laughs> But we also meet a, a lonely, shy boy who's um, about 12 years old named Woody Gurner, who's played by Chris Makepeace, who's being sent to summer camp by his father, but he decided to run away from the camp to a nearby bus station, which is Greyhound, you know, mostly because he couldn't fit in. I mean, they've been treating him this way, like he couldn't kick the, the soccer ball. And so that's when Tripper um, came by, you know, just to have some fries and starts to, um, you know, try to talk him out of it by taking him under his ring. And each morning they decided to go jogging and they suddenly bond with each other as best friends. Not to mention they, they go around playing blackjack <laughs> where they they had to collect all the peanuts. So... So once you win, you'll be able to have the entire peanuts for yourselves. <laughs> it's pretty funny. They were also drinking some uh, club soda. And uh, yeah, and you couldn't forget this line. Oh, really? <laughs> or, oh, really? Wait. Okay, I know. I'm, I'm trying my best. And that's the thing about Tripper, you know, he does come up with a lot of funny jokes that it's kind of hard to describe. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, because it just doesn't matter. Well, we're going to get to that joke too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just so many jokes. Um, I just don't want to, you know, give her away too much because I, I usually do sometimes, but it's just so hard that... You can't even remember as much after a while. But I understand, you know, and plus, you know, I, I want to, you know, it's their game, you know, it's their role, and they, they could do what they can, so. So I, I do sometimes do some invitations. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, back to that, yes. Um, as the story goes by, you know, this is where Spaz suddenly, you know, wants up um, getting to know all the beautiful girls because he wants to hang out you know he was he was very shy for that too yeah <laughs> because hey you know he's a nerdy guy you know sometimes you know nerds can get all the girls but sometimes you know they you know they get rejected by Woody tries to encourage Tripper to to make romance with Roxanne you know in fact this is where you know, they started to wrestle, <laughs> you know, trying to keep up with um, everything on schedule here uh, for, for the summer camp. And I, I just love those moments, too, where he just goes around, you know, trying to wrestle uh, Roxanne. You're just having fun. You're making love. And, <laughs> and he acts so helpless at the end. It's just, oh, fun. Okay. Um, so, then... Um, then we have um, that one scene where Candace suddenly kidnaps Crockett, you know, in a speedboat, so that way, you know, they can start making love, you know, having his, having her confessions uh, with him, you know, about her feelings. Um, Wheels, on the other hand, uh, just broken up with Al um, the year before, but eventually they suddenly reconnect with each other. Yeah, for a three-year uh, relationship, so an anniversary. So they're trying to make it up for that. Um, you know, bef you know, during the the dance that was going around. Um, but yeah, Spaz was was having a crush on. Uh, but back to uh, Spaz, yeah, he was having a crush on Jackie, yeah, the blonde girl. Um, she's very hot, sexy, attractive. I mean, couldn't he couldn't forget the scenes where. You know, it was uh, canoe riding, and, and Jackie wanted Spaz to actually put some uh, suntan lotion on her, and this is where he starts to feel very nervous and 
And she's, he's like, oh, man. Um, yes, there's even um, moments, too, where um, where hardware actually takes the, the air conditioner from um, Morty, yeah, Mickey, because he had to uh, set up a, a dynamite just to create a hole to connect with uh, all the uh, outlets so they can get the air conditioner inside their the boys' uh, bunk room. But uh, once uh, he prepared to turn it on, suddenly it causes the entire power to go out. Yeah, the power outage. And, and this is when he said, Hardware? What? Your dick. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um. So that's where. So basically, for the plot alone, this, they just focus on Camp North Star's uh, rivalry with Camp Mohawk, which is a very wealthy summer camp that's located across the lake. Um, yeah, this is kind of. Yep, this is kind of like uh, Camp Hope. Versus Camp MPV. <laughs> yes, heavyweights. Uh, I, I can't help it. Um, so they had a basketball game. And what do you know it? <laughs> um, North Star pretty much suck at the game. Because, you know, they keep fucking up. And, <laughs> yes, I know I'm cursing. Whatever, it's my channel. Um, yeah, they keep messing up. Um, hardware gets his nose bleed. Um, the other teams are tripping, you know, they try to make the basket, they couldn't. Um, same, same goes with, uh, with Fink, you know, he tries to uh, make the shot. Um, and he did actually make the shot, but then at times, yeah, kind of misses, but then they, they're, they're about to get there. Um, but then uh, at the end, just when... The <laughs> uh, which is funny, too, because... Um, uh, Tripper's always been pulling some uh, practical jokes on Morty, by, um, by of course, uh, you know, t taking him through his bunk uh, out of uh, at night and just begins to send him directly to to the trees, you know, where it said welcome parents. So when parents uh, come during the day, you know, they'll be able to meet their kids and teenagers uh, to visit, and. And yes, they, they always keep uh, redirecting to a different place after another. So it's like a runny gag, you know. Always, uh, you know, pulling practical jokes on on uh, Morty. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Um, so anyway, yeah, before he starts to show up. Um, and when he did show up um, with the rest of the team here, that's when they decided to find a way to actually beat their game because apparently they're about to lose anyway. They decided to pull their pants down. Yes, the entire uh, Camp Mohawk uh, basketball team, they had to pull their pants down and then they had to uh, run as fast as they can straight to the bus so <laughs> they could drive off and just uh, go out to um, you know, camp uh, somewhere. Uh, yeah, like Again, as I mentioned, the uh, canoe riding that's what they had to go on, and and then they started to have like uh, those campfire uh, stories where this is where uh, Tripper was about to explain about uh, a deranged killer that's uh, on the loose, and and he had a hook on it, and that sort of thing. <laughs> and then next thing you know, uh, both Tripper and and Roxanne decided to go skinny dipping at the lake. Yep, they were. They were swimming naked. <laughs> they take off all their clothes off, and <laughs> so you actually see um, all the you see a dolly shot of them of all the clothes around the the uh, around the, the the woods. And there you go. <laughs> and it was really cold too. Okay, um, but as they start with the um, the yearly Olympiad, which is Again, the, the North Star versus uh, the Mohawks. This is where they try to, uh, you know, perverse form of their own victory. You know, they're trying to uh, be able to win, but it leads to cheating that's happening. Yeah, mostly because one, one of the uh, 
the Mohawk kids uh, as he took a slingshot and actually shot uh, the beach ball uh, for, for the North Star kid and he cried and, and the, the counselor came by and, and helped him so they're about to lose yeah and and they had to, you know they had to do uh, other um, other sports like you know for example they had to uh, they had to take the high jump yeah for Crockett which he failed um, a Harvard suddenly gets pummeled in boxing yeah a Jackie suddenly suffers a broken leg in field hockey yeah you know, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, no thanks to the Mohawk girls because they pulled some pranks here um, by kicking them. So, um, so because of that, the Mohawks only won 170 points, while North Star only ends up at 63. So, so that evening at the North Star Lodge, this is where Tripper actually gave us, you know what, that rousing speech that he was doing. And this is where he says, It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. And <laughs> I just love that. I mean, all, all the lines he had to, to explain to all the, the counselors and teenagers and kids out there. They're all chanting. You know, it, it was like, you know, they, they had the money. They had the power. They have everything they, they own, but it just doesn't matter because no matter what they do, we're going to beat to their game, even if it kills them, you know, that sort of thing. So once they get to um, the next event for day two, that's when they're continuing to go on to win in every event, every event, and they got better and better. So Wheels out wrestles his opponent. Spats defeats uh, Rhino in the stacking contest. Yes, they had to stack all these cups around, and they had to try their best not to, uh, you know, drop them because if you do, you'll lose. Which th there's another plank here where, <laughs> where the uh, mo where the uh, the little uh, North Star boys just uh, took the slingshot and knocked the. <laughs> the uh, the opponent in the leg and he drops all the cuffs so now Spaz made it and he won and of course the hot dog scene yes the hot dog scene where Fink actually had to eat all these wonderful weenies <laughs> I just love that scene because that's where he had to wait for you guessed it the stomach to show up and the stomach is actually played by by uh, yeah, the stomach and the stomach uh, just came by and decided to uh, compete uh, with Fink, and this is where they start having to eat like a like a thousand uh, hot dogs on that uh, bowl, and what do you know it? Fink won the contest. Yes, I mean it was a hard one, but. He had to do it with, with the help of Tripper, you know, trying to tell him to eat all these weenies. <laughs> yeah, you know, just stuck them all in, into his mouth. And he's like pressuring them, pressuring them, pressuring them. <laughs> you know, trying to not try to lose confidence here. Okay. And then it only leads to one event left, which happens to be the four mile cross country run for only 20 points. So now they're trying to figure out which one could actually r run the fastest but what did you know they brought in Rudy to join in because even though Rudy never had done this before well he did actually jog uh, with uh, the Tripper uh, before yeah because you know they're trying to you know to have more exercise be able to lose weight this sort of way so he, yeah uh, Tripper talked him out of it, so hoping that he'll be able to do best. And what do you know, he did. Which, um, he ran as fast as he could. I mean, he did tripped. 
Um, same goes with the opponent. Um, he also tripped as well. Um, but they kept on going until they finally made it into the finish line. And he won. He won for the entire in Olympic. And I'm happy. And then after that, they had a, a campfire song to join in, too. And, yeah. And they explained that they had the best summer of their lives. Which, it was time to go. So. <laughs> which led to the end credits where, once again, Tripper is just pulling the practical joke on Morty. <laughs> which, yes, this is where he, he, he ties him up straight into... Uh, the river, yeah, just puts uh, his bed and his cabinet on there, and and it keeps falling around into the river, and then just comes back up. While all the rest of the counselors and the kids had left uh, in their school buses around, yeah. While uh, Tripper is riding on his motorcycle with um, Roxanne, yeah, it's just. <laughs> I, I really love this movie. I mean, it's hilarious. No doubt about it. I mean, a lot of memorable scenes uh, that you'll never forget. Um, the characters are just well written, well done. I uh, love the score that's done by Elmer Bernstein. Yeah, because he later went on to compose the score for Ghostbusters and as well as uh, Stripes. So... The cinematography was done by Don Wilder, so it actually creates like a beautiful landscape of what um, Canada looks like uh, with with the summer camp, uh, the forests, uh, the beautiful uh, lake that we saw, all these other shots that they had. Considering the fact that this was made in 1978 that they filmed it at, they actually filmed it uh, during the spring. I mean, it does make it look like summer, but it still looks as beautiful as ever. It does rain at times, but in the end, it, they continue to go on as it follows. So it felt like you know, it was a hot summer day, <laughs> and it worked. I love the characters, too. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, what more can you say? I mean, they were fun. And yes, um, there's. I, I love those other funny moments, too, when... <laughs> when Spaz and Fink were about to go sneak up into the uh, the girls' bunker room, and this is where a Al and was like doing a like a joke where like she was like having sex, <laughs> you know, pretending like he was a guy, you know, having sex with a girl and and all that, uh, just you know, all this girl talk stuff, and and what do you know, <laughs> Spaz overheard it, and and he was like. Um, yeah, he, he was like, he had a boner. <laughs> like, he do. And then, next thing you know, uh, the girls overheard them and they came out of the bunker and starts to. Uh, <laughs> they they uh, they grabbed Spaz, they took uh, <laughs> Fink's uh, pants out and, and decided to hang his pants onto the flagpole. <laughs> yeah, salute your pants. Just like salutes your shorts. <laughs> oh, that's just funny. Um, there's a lot of gags like that too um, that I can pretty much explain, but but you kind of got the idea. Um, but it was trying to be like Animal House but for summer camp, but it's kind of pretty tame in comparison. Um, and plus, um, maybe there could have been more to it. Uh, but I can understand because they want this movie to be more like a family comedy in a way. That's why it was given a PG rating. But it still has adult humor. Um, a lot of that. And I mean, Bill Murray was just hilarious in this movie. No doubt about it. He stole the show playing Tripper. You know, this is the character that you really love. He's awesome, energetic, uh, wisecracking type of guy that you just... You just can't help but love. I mean, this is the kind of guy you want to be friends with. And I love that. And, I mean, I love his sense of humor. And, you know, he's, he's also suave, too. I mean, I love how he's he's wrestling with Roxanne, you know, making love of him, love of her, even though, you know, he, 
you know he's trying his best to, to do that but it wasn't easy but they got it so uh, and Kate Lynch was very beautiful too um, yeah she she really uh, really shows and Chris McPeace says Rudy uh, very shy guy but he, he's cool um, just showed him all the ropes. I mean, he's he's a very good uh, blackjack player and and all that, and and he gets to run as fast as he can, no matter what. And Morty was a right too. I mean, played by Harvey Atkins. Yeah. He's what he is. I mean, the butt of the jokes. Um, uh, I I love. I love Matt Craven in the film as Hardware. Yeah, he, he even got to do his own stunts too, where he did the flips, yeah, somersaults, um, when he was doing the the boxing match, and I love that. And um, I, I love uh, Fink too. I mean, he's you know, he was overweight, but he was uh, he was fascinating I mean, because you know in, in summer camp movies they always have a fat guy. I mean, that's that's pretty common, but he's a cool fat guy. Uh, Jack Blum as Spaz, yeah, totally nerdy, <laughs> but nevertheless, you know he, you know he loves to have a crush with the sexy Jackie, incredibly hot. I mean, especially when she's wearing all these sexy clothes, you know, like like brawls and <laughs> yeah, short shorts and you know, these, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know, it turns me on these days. Uh, Kristen DeVille, AL, you know, a tomboyish character. I also love her too. She she does have a monotone voice, but she's you know, very cute. Love that. And um, all the other guys, they're, they're awesome. I mean, there's even a funny moment too when they were playing tennis. And because <laughs> they have a lot of gags going around, I mean... He even got a nerdy uh, girl too uh, when she was trying to catch the uh, trying to serve that that tennis ball and then suddenly she fails and, and you, get, you see like a panty shot <laughs> yeah okay uh, oh and of course you couldn't forget that famous song the, the music was really cool um, there there is a disco song which is making it by David Naughton yeah, which he later went on to do the film American Werewolf in London. Um, but also, they had the song called Meatballs, that's the theme song, that was by Rick Dees. Yes, Rick Dees, who went on to become the most famous DJ of all time, especially when he was a DJ at uh, 102.7 KISS FM. Yeah, But yes, he was a singer all, uh, during the, the 70s. And I think 80s as well, yeah, because he was the one who created the song Disco Duck. Which, yeah, you know that song, the one where it sounded like Donald Duck, you know, doing disco dancing, that sort of way. Um, yeah, that... <laughs> uh, but they also um, had the most famous song of them all, a very catchy song called Are You Ready For The Summer? Are You Ready For The Sunshine? Are you ready for the birds and bees, the apple trees, and a whole lot fooling around? Are you ready for the summer? Are you ready for the hot nights? Are you ready for the fireflies, moonlit skies, and a whole lot fooling around? That sort of song. Yeah, that, that's the song that, you, that just gets stuck in your head for hours. And th this is the equivalent of everything is awesome. And what's funny though was that everything's awesome <laughs> does sound pretty similar to this. Uh, but I know, I had to throw it there. <laughs> but the movie is awesome, alright? It's hilarious, I love it. Um, what more can you say? I mean, watch this movie, um, buy the Blu ray uh, or DVD or any other. I mean, hey, even watch a digital copy or watch it on the Netflix or any other. If they have it on Netflix or any other, you're going to have a fun time watching this film. Especially for its 40th anniversary. I mean, this is perfect. Yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. That's Meatballs. And I give it five stars. Because 
It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.